Good times and great music at 2NURFM 103.7 as we jump in and have a look at some of the things happening in the world of science. We do that with our Professor of Science from the University of Newcastle, John O'Connor, who is deciding to get a little surgical with us today, John. So you're not going to be slicing as you're not looking and going which way to slice you up, are you? And I'm not looking to get sliced up myself either, Mark. <laughs> Okay, so we know where we stand. That's good. Um, it turns out, though, when it comes to actually making those incisions, oils ain't oils. Yeah, I, I love these stories which are counterintuitive because mm. I mean, counterintuitive means there's something we didn't really understand. And, and in fact, that's how a lot of science develops. They go, oh... That, yeah. should, that shouldn't have happened. How does this happen? Yeah. What's going on? And, yeah. and it, it turns, uh, it, it features uh, surgical incisions. Now, we've always seen, if you watch TV, you know, the mm. surgeon gets there and with a very sharp I knife. And can, does I, a... can I say it? Can I say the word? <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Here we go. I'll stop right there. Uh, yeah, they make this really very fine, straight cut. And, you know, that's, that's what I thought was de rigueur. But it seems that not everyone prefers that method. And, in fact, there is some preference for having a zigzag scar. So a group of researchers at the Nanyang Technological University in, uh, in uh, Singapore have been investigating to find out what's the difference between a straight cut and a zigzag cut. Because it turns out that it would seem that a zigzag cut uh, heals faster and re- reduces the scar tissue. So how are they – I mean, first of all, how did someone th- think that this might actually be a, a way to go? Because you would think, whoop, straight cut, get in there and do what you need to do. But um, I'll ask the obvious question, why is it so? Why does it actually – why does it better? Why, why is it better? Yeah. The um, th- they thought initially by having a zigzag cut, it just may reduced a longer line, and therefore there were more chance for cells to swap and move around. Okay. but but it worked out that wasn't the case, and and they had to look at it more carefully, and the reason is that if you look at the cells which are in the in the open area between you know in the open cut, on a straight uh, cut. That those cells tend to move along the the edge. They move backwards and forwards. They don't move across. Uh, whereas in the case of a zigzag cut, they move in a in a circular fashion, which means there's a greater chance of them making a link from one side of the wound to the other side of the wound, and so th- that creates a bridge. And of course, the bridge is the part that then you know, holds it together mm. and, and and opens out. So the first thing they found was that. The, the zigzag seems to affect the, the, the cell uh, geometry. Different geometric confinement means that the cell migration mm, goes across the gap rather than along the edge. But it also, uh, they found another difference too, and that is when the cells grow, the cells are distorted. So that normally with a cell, the nucleus of the cell is in the middle and, and there's a sp- you know, the body of the cell around it. But at the cut... The uh, the nucleus is near the the cut surfaces uh, near near the, near the original surface itself, and the cell sort of projects out, and so that indicates to them that it's actually under a lot of mechanical tension. So there's a lot more force there, and uh, and help and that helps to close up the gap. It would be funny. I mean, it would be odd to look at, wouldn't it? You you've come out the surgery was success, fantastic, and you've got that zigzag pattern there. Um, but, you know, if all of those other, you know, ducks line up in a row, it's uh, not as unorthodox necessarily as it sounds. Well, if it re- reduces scar tissue, that's a very important point. Absolutely. I mean, certainly in the case of cosmetic yeah. uh, tissue, uh, cosmetic uh, procedures, having zero scar tissue is the essential. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work for me. I mean, I've, I've had a couple of uh, cuts in my life where they've, they've, in one case they took out a melanoma, surgeon promised that by doing a he did an interesting cut he did a something like a um, a, a straight straight edged s or a z mm. uh, to, to reduce the scar tissue and so forth still got a scar there in fact my daughter's really impressed they've etched my wife's initial <laughs> on my back <laughs> how funny and i'm sort of the opposite i've had a couple of places where i've you know, a couple of interesting injuries i won't share but interesting one and i would love to still have a scar to prove that that's happened Healed up completely. Oh, you, you can you can read read the history of my life by the scars on various parts of my body, and they're all all quite legitimately yeah. obtained. Nothing nothing that uh, uh, illegal. Are you suggesting next time you want to do this segment without a shirt on, John? So we can just <laughs> no. 
<laughs> All right, mate, as always, a pleasure. Thanks for your time, eh? Thanks, Mark. A professor of science from the University of Newcastle, John O'Connor, with us this morning on 2 RFM. A broadcast service of the University of Newcastle.